four kinds of data you can save and load in Crusher X. The spline graphs, Sound files and presets. Preset contains, of course, all parameter settings, but also all spline graphs used in the preset as well as the keyboard scale and the loaded sound file, if there is any. In other words, saving the preset in Crusher X is GUI, it is called export, means storing everything. Fine. But not really saving everything. Whereas the spline graph is really saved with the preset, the scale and the sound file are not. There is only a pointer stored, a pointer to the place where in your computer the scale and the sound file are stored. If you delete them or reorganize your hard disk, Crusher X will of course not find them. In case of a missing sound file, you just don't hear anything after loading the preset using this sound file. You can load another sound file or go and find the missing one and load it later. But in case of a missing scale, you get an error message and get into a real mess. So. When reorganizing your hard disk, be careful about that. After drawing a spline graph, you may want to store it, so that you can use it in other presets or for modulating other parameters in the same preset. You can do so. Just click Save after drawing and give it a name. Don't uh, forget the place where you have stored it and try to use meaningful names so that you will find this special spline when you need it later. Let's say you want a special modulation of the filter frequency, so let's draw one. Now we want the same modulation for the filter Q, so I save the graph Give it a name here, a preset filter F and Q. Then I click the filter Q tab, choose the modulation method spline and load the just saved graph into the window. Ready. Some words about naming conventions. I strongly recommend to have any and use them. For spline graphs, I use the name of the preset, followed by the modulated parameter and eventually a number. 
Mm. But you can use your own ones as long as you have any conventions. They make life easier a lot. Loading a special scale in the MIDI keyboard is quite self-explanatory. Click the tuning window, click insert file and choose your wanted scale. There will be an extra video about scales later in this series. Loading the sound file into Crusher X's buffer is equally easy and self-explanatory, but, but, but. When you save a sound file from the buffer again, you are likely to save something else as you have loaded, normally something remarkably shorter, even if you haven't changed anything in Crusher X. So never ever use the same name as the loaded sound file its name for saving it again you are in danger to lose content. Crusher X doesn't usually store the whole loaded sound file, but only the part of it that is relevant for the actual designed sound. And you never store what you hear, because what you hear is the result of Crusher X processing the raw original sound file in the buffer. What you store is this raw, unprocessed sound file in the buffer itself. Go and store the whole thing as a preset if you want to store what you are hearing. The next video in this series is going to be about the buffer and its proper handling. And at last some words about handling presets. Again, always when loading or reloading Crush Lex, you get the factory presets. But when you load a project in your door, a project containing Crush Lex, you get, of course, the presets you have stored with your door like with all VSTs. When you make changes, the name of the actual preset gets a blue color and there is an asterisk in front of it. Clicking the reset button cancels all changes you have made since importing the preset or, in case of a factory preset, since loading Crusher X. Quite useful to make a series of different presets from the same mother preset. Thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a comment and please consider subscribing, liking and sharing. Enjoy your life.